Let's learn to automate applications in Power Automate for desktop. The case today is that we want to automate in the Windows Calculator. The Windows Calculator looks like this. Go to your start, search for calculator or calculator in your own language if you don't have Windows in English. I have, so I just open it here. This is the application that we want to automate in. We do this because we all have this application installed, but also because the same principle applies whether we automate in the calculator or much more advanced systems. We will use the same approach. Now get started. So the case today is that we want to open up the calculator. Then we want to take dynamic input from the user. We will store them into variables, two variables, then we will make an addition of those two variables. Then we will scrape the result, for example, if the user provided two and five, we will click equal, and then we will scrape this seven result and present it. Finally, we will close the application. So here you will learn to click buttons in an application, you will learn to work with scraping results from the application and to present it. Let's get started. So I go to Power Automate for desktop and then create a new flow. I will call this applications and then calc like this and then click create. So here's our blank canvas. First, I want to open up the application. So I'll find a run application like this and drag it in. Here I need to define an application path for the calculator or whatever app I will open. Today is the calculator, so I will just provide it here or find it by selecting file. The calculator is a window app, so I can just say calc exit. This one will open up the calculator. You can always Google the apps that will give you the path, so you can easily do it instead of sitting around and finding the executable path on your computer. But I click save. Now let me try to run it. We open up a calculator. So that's it. Let's also close it. So when we are done, we want to close the calculator. I will find a terminate, terminate process, take this one and drag it in. So I will terminate it by the process name. And then in this dropdown, I can find some predefined processes. I will have the calculator, then I can click save. So now I will open it and then I will close it. Nothing happens, but this is just to show you how you can open applications and close them again. So here I want to have a display message because I just want to pause the flow to see that everything works. So this will just be a message box that will pause the workflow and we can click OK and see that everything is going on like we expect to, like this. So now I can click run. So I run the application. So this one opens and I even have like three calculators. Put on pause, I can click OK. This terminate process will close down all calculator windows. Be aware that if we want to automate in other applications, you should have all your work saved, of course. So we are closing the calculator in the end. Another good practice is to close down applications in the beginning and then open it, because then we know we are on the front page. That's it. Now let's take two inputs from the user and use those to automate our calculator. So instead of this display message, I'll drag in two display input dialog. Here I will say number A, and I'll say in the text, please put in a number between zero and nine. We do this because we only have zero and nine buttons, and this could be buttons in any app named something else. So now I have the zero to nine, and then I will store this into number A variable like this, so then I click save. Similarly, I'll do it for number B, so I'll just right click and copy, control V or control C, I could have copied. Now I have two equal actions. So I open up the last one here. I'll call this number B instead and store it in the number B variable. So these ones will just take on input from the user, take a number, and then we will use it to type something into the calculator in our application. I will delete this display message. I will also disable the terminate process because I want to keep it open while, while I develop, then we can enable it afterwards. 
What you do here is just you right click enable action, right click disable action. Then this step will be ignored. So when I click run here, I'll run the application and let me drag in this number eight. I'll say two plus eight. Nothing will happen, but you can see that the number gets stored here. Now we just need to use this number to type into an eight. And of course, if the user types in other numbers, I want to also make it work with those numbers. So now let's find a click action. So I'll find a click, pick the one that's called click UI element in window and drag it in beneath here. This one will be our number A. Now we will configure the UI element. So click the drop down here and add UI element. Here you can see I can choose all the elements in this calculator. I will just pick a random number. You can do the same. So hover over one of the numbers, press control in and click the number. We will not use this, but now we created the selector. Then I click save. If I want to inspect the UI element, click the stack of It looks like papers, but it is UI elements. Here you can see we have the button one. First, let's rename it. You can either press F2 when you're over here, or you can right click, rename. I will say number A button. Because this one, we will make it work whether or not the user has typed in one. Let's go inspect it. You inspect it by double clicking it. Then this is the address of the number one button. We haven't fixed it yet, but we'll do so. So double click again. Here you have the address. You can have this selected tree or we can fix it manually. So untick this custom. What's, what it says here is that we have a window. We have the class Windows UI core window. The name is calculator. And then there's some elements in the calculator. And right here you can see that this ID number one button. So if I instead of number one button could press number five button, update, close. Now let's try to run our application once more. So now we will press the five instead of one just by changing something in the selector. There you go, we have clicked number five. But let's fix it so make it work that we will type in whatever the user has typed in in number eight. So click the UI elements, double click here, double click again, and instead of this five, delete that, click the variables up here, and then we will use the number A variable. You can see that we have now inserted it here. We have percentage signs on each part of the number A. That means that this is the variable we're using. Then we click update and we click close. Now let's try to run it again. Drag it in from the other screen. So I say four and I want to add it with four. We only fixed the number A button. So now it will say four and it will work with whatever button we have in. That's it, that's four. So then we will copy it. So I will just do this. I will right click, copy, control V or right click, control V. What do you think about the quality of this lesson? Please post it in the comment below. That will help me a lot. Thank you. So now I just need to fix the selector for this. Otherwise it will be the same. So what I can do is to go over here. I can add UI element, then pick a random new number, control and then left click. That one was bottom nine. Here we go. So first we rename it. I rename it to number B button. You could also just have dragged in a new click UI element and then made it from here. But now you saw how we can do it like this instead, like copying the activity. So I open it, open it again, and I click custom off. And again, we need to go down here to num9 button. I delete this and then I use the number B variable. So whatever the user typed into the number B, that is the second input dialog, we will use that here in this selector. That's it. So I'll click close. Then I'll go in here and instead of number A, I'll switch it to number B. This was a little bit more steps than we'll used to do, but now you can see how you can easily toggle between UI elements. Now we just need a plus and an equal sign. So I'll drag in another click UI element between these two. I'll add that UI element. Here I'll pick a plus, control and click it. So that one was the plus, save. 
I like to name it just like the other ones. Always keep good naming references. So instead of button plus, I will say plus button. So I'll keep the same convention. You can see that it changed over here. Similarly, I want to have an equal sign in the end. So I'll add that UI element as well. Here, control in, and I have the equal sign again. And I click save. Over here, you can see that I can rename it, and then I can say equal button like this. So now let's see if it works. And let me just, because we don't have the terminate process enabled, I'll just close it manually so we can see what's actually going on. We only have one calculator. So now the input dialog is on my other screen. I will say eight plus, and then we will say zero, for example. So now, we made it work, it will say eight plus zero equals two, and that is eight. Now we want to use this result. So we will find an extract here. Make sure you take the extract data from window and not the extract data from web page. Sometimes you can get a little bit confused. Drag it in underneath here. So here we will choose another UI element. So I will click this drop down. I will add UI element. And now I want to extract from here. So again, control in, click it. This one will be text display is eight. I will store it not in an Excel sheet, but in a variable. Here we can say, see that the data produced that is data from window. That is just the name of the variable with the content in. Here it's eight, but it could be any result from our calculation. So I will rename this. I can just say result like this. And again, because this will work whether or not the display is eight or so we think, we can inspect the UI element again over here. First, I want to rename it. So I right click, rename, and then I'll say result field like this. I double click, then I double click once more, and then I inspect. Is there something that where this says result is eight in this selector? No, that's not. So it will probably like it with 99% work whether or not the result is eight. That's fine. It will just store it into a result variable and let's see that it actually works. So now I run it again, drag this in. I'll say three plus and then just pick two. So now there's a three plus two equals five. And then hopefully we will scrape the results, which is result is equal to five or display is five over here. So now you can see we can use this result because this is the exact result that we want to present. But wouldn't it be a bit nicer if we could just have the five on and not the display is. So let's go fix that as well. We will learn some string manipulation. But first, let's find a display message to have the message displayed. You will use this variable, this result variable, if you want to write it back into a system, into an Excel sheet or whatever you want. So now we just present it in a message box. We drag that in here. We will just present the result. So here I'll say result is, and then in the message to display, I'll use the result variable. So I'll do this and do this. Then I click save. Now I can run it again. Here I have my input dialog over here. So I'll say seven, then I'll say three. So now I'll say seven plus three, that equals 10. And we will present that in our message box. That is it, display is 10. Now we want to remove the display is. So if I go over here, I'll find a get subtext. This one will do string manipulation amongst others uh, activities. So I drag it underneath the display message after the extracted data from window. To the original text, that is what, whatever is in the result variable. So I'll click here, find the result. Then I'll say, I want to only have the characters after a certain position. I want to start at a position. And let me see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we want to start at a 12th position. This is zero indexed. So the first position is zero. So it's actually position 11. That's just how it is in programming. So then we'll say we can have the length. Is that number of chars or? the end of the text. I'll just choose the end of the text. Then we will make it work with whether or not we have one or two digits in. 
I'll store this string manipulation into the result variable again. No reason, no reason to create a new one. So I can just click the X here and choose the result. Then I can click save. Now I can enable my terminate process again. So I right click and enable action. Let's run the flow and see that everything works. You can now create dynamic selectors and you can work with application as this is the same principle that goes. So now I do my calculation, three plus six equals to nine. The result is nine. We now got rid of the dis displayers. And when I click OK here, we will terminate all calculator windows. The next lesson is here on the screen. Just click it.